welcome to my site code diaries uh, today's topic language fallback in site code i am jitendra ghanekar i am a site code 10.net certified developer i am a site code consultant and architect in mumbai so let's start let's see what we are going to see today uh, in this video a preview of the video uh, we will see one business use case where we can use the fallback uh, language fallback we will see different types of our language fallbacks uh, we will see how to call uh, configure a fallback language then we will see item and field level configuration and then we will see website level configuration so before starting uh, if you have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to the channel please click on a bell icon to get uh, latest update and if you like the video please click on like button please share it with others and do comment on the uh, video and provide the feedback so let's start let's see a business use case where we can use the language fallback the customer global site is in english and some of its english content is same across other countries of english website uh, so we have one website uh, uh, which is English website site uh, www.example.com is an English website so it has an English content and this content is uh, going to be a same or some of the content of this, uh, this uh, site is uh, going to say remain same for other English speaking website so maybe let's take example of India website so it might have uh, some uh, some content the same as a global website or maybe the Canada website it is also English Canada website it is also having the same content uh, maybe from the India website or maybe from the global website so uh, the, the the content authors may not want to uh, want to make changes on the both the side or do a data entry on the both the uh, all three sites okay they might, might set up the common content at the global website and english and can sorry india and canada website should pick up the data from that so that is our business use case so you have an initial content is set up in the uh, global website that is en website and then only some of the pages are different on this uh, india website for some pages the content should come from the global website whereas the uh, for the canada website only the home pages are different all other content it should come from same from the india website so this is our business use case so how will you use the language fallback that we will see now so we have a uh, www.example.com okay this is the english website and you assume that we have a three pages home product and news okay all these contents are there uh, which is set up by the global content uh, authors we have a uh, example.com slash enin that is a, your english india website here what is happening is your home page is uh, different your product page is different but news are coming from the global okay and then you have a enca canada english uh, site here the only the home pages are different otherwise but both the uh, product and news content should come from the india website that is the uh, uh, this, this is the, our requirement okay now how does the fallback should work so for enca the canada language the fallback should be india so enin should be its fallback for enin the fallback should be en okay so english should be a fallback for enin so what should happen at the item level the if you see the english the uh, there is no news item uh, for enca there is a new news item and product okay in this case what should be happening is for the product it should get fallback uh, for the canada it should get fallback and it should uh, uh, display the products which are available in the india website so it should come in the enca whereas the news which is not available in ENCA, so it will fall back to ENIN, but it is not available in ENIN also, so it should then come back from the news. So this is how the fallback will work, and this will easy to authorize the uh, easy for the content editors because they will set up only one content. If there is any change in that content, they they are updating only at a one place only. Okay, so this is how the fallback sh should work, and this is supported by the site code. Now let's see how it can be done in the site code. So let's see uh, different types of a fallback in uh, site code. So site code basically has a two type of a fallback. First is item level fallback. 
item level fallback enables you to set up an empty item version in a given language so that it fallbacks to another language version including all its fields in this way you can launch a new language version of your entire website without creating any items in the new language in the content database so basically you have a home item okay let's assume that you have a home item so uh, for the english language for the global english language that is en language and you want to set up a new uh, website for en in and it will have all the contents of a home page from the home page language the uh, of uh, english then there is no need to create any version of a uh, english india language en in language okay if you set up a fallback for that en in language as a en language then the uh, at it and also enable the item level fallback then the content will be pulled back from the en uh, uh, en language to the en in language even without a uh, creating an uh, item versions not only that item but all the field values also will get uh, get uh, pulled from the en language to the en in language so that is item level fallback Second is a field level fallback. Field level fallback enables you to specify a single field which field values that you want to localize and which field values that you want to fall back to another language. So in this field uh, field level fallback, as name says, it is at a field level. So again, we will get uh, take the same example home uh, page. Okay, for English language in home page there might be a some uh, field like uh, maybe a title not, not a title let's say let's take an example of a logo okay so logo uh, you want to have the uh, uh, fallback or a title you want to have a fallback okay so in that case what will happen is the title of the page okay uh, let's take an example of title of it. so title of the page in the en that is a global language you want to fall back as for the uh, uh, ENIN language, okay? So in that case, what will happen is if you set up the field level fallback, so you want you should go at uh, that field level that is the title field. There you set up the fallback. Then in that case, you should be having a uh, ENIN should have the version, okay? It, that that item will have a version, but the field the title value is not there. It will be picked from the uh, uh, from the en uh, en field so that is how it should it is work and then you have a dictionary level so two are uh, the basic type of a fallback but dictionary also has a fallback that uses a uh, by default item level fallback okay so in the dictionary if you create a dictionary for a uh, en but not for the en and then all that uh, and it is a fallback is set up then all the content from the en will be displayed into the en in so that is how it works so these are the type of a fallback So till now we are talking uh, like if, uh, we will be setting up fallback uh, uh, like for ENIN the EN will be fallback the ENCA ENIN will be the fallback. So how can we set up? So in the uh, content editor if you go to the system node you will have a language node in that you can set up the fallback language like uh, for by default you will have a en language there so you want to set up the enc website then you have to create a enc language here okay then uh, in that language there will be a fallback field okay so you have a fallback field he, what does it mean where should this language should fall fall back so if the content is not there where should it fall back so then here you have to set up an en so in our case our example what we have seen in our business use case enin should have a fallback language as en enc should have a fallback language as enin so we will set up like that on the so where we will shall, uh, set up the language fallback it will be a language node and the field will be uh, fallback language now we will see how the uh, item level fallback can be done okay so when you select an item so every item will have in the advanced section will have this field enable item fallback checkbox by default it is not checked okay so if you see what it is saying display item from the fallback language if no language version exists okay so you have to select this checkbox for setting up the item level fallback okay and this can be done at the item level so you can have an item uh, and that item you, if you select the enable item fallback so template will get fallback then you have a uh, standard values 
okay so by best practice as you know it will be always a standard value in the standard value if you select it it will get uh, uh, applied to all the uh, whenever you are create a new item for that template okay and then at item level so all the contain item also you can set up that so it will have the fallback so if you do not want to set up at a template table then don't go, to go for a template or standard value you have to do it at the item level so this is how you will set up the item level fallback so in the for setting up the item level fallback you have to go to the item in the advanced section you have a checkbox called enable item fallback you have to select that so this is how you will select the uh, you or this is how you will configure the item level fallback now uh, let's see how can you do at the field level okay so as name suggests you have to go to the field okay once you select the field there you will have this checkbox enable field level fallback there is a one more checkbox here that is called as the enable version field level fallback if you read it if uh, for the e e e enable field level fallback if no value is present display the field value from the fallback la language version of the current item okay for the enable version field level fallback if no value is present display the field value from the fallback language version of the current item okay so this is uh, these are the two things which you can set up so enable field value fallback to enable the language fallback for all the language versions of the current field all the language or version of the current field this applies to all the currently available language version of the field and any new language version that you can create whereas enable version field level fallback to enable language fallback for only the current language version so above field is enable field level fallback it's for the all the language whereas the second one enable version field level fallback that is only for the step current language version of the field okay so, th so this is how the uh, field level fallback you can configure so we have seen item level fallback you have seen field level fallback now you can set up the uh, uh, website level fallback also you can enable the language fallback for each relevant site for that you have a configuration file uh, that is set up in the website app config includes site port dot language dot fallback config here you will have you can use the two attributes enable item language fallback that will uh, enable the uh, item uh, language fallback for uh, item level language fallback for the corresponding site whereas you have an enable field level language fallback so it will enable the field level language fallback for the selected website that can be done by this patch configuration where you can update the uh, two attributes the enable item language fallback and enable field language fallback as a true so that will make website level uh, fallback uh, uh, enabled okay so you so that you can uh, work on the uh, language fallback So it is very important to set up the website level fallback uh, uh, so that you can have the uh, website level uh, fallback not website level fallback actually it is you are enabling the uh, item level fallback and enable the field language fallback for the website level okay so this this you should be doing it uh, in the uh, configuration file uh, website slash config slash into site code language fallback dot config basically you will create a patch file to override this uh, uh, file okay so this is how you will enable the item and the uh, field level fallback so we are done for today if you want if you have any questions you can reach to my gmail id jitu site course cms at gmail.com you can reach to my uh, linkedin id jitendra khanekar and if you are not yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel please click on a bell icon to get a latest update and if you like the video please click on a like button please share it with others and do provide your feedback via the comment thank you thanks for watching